Hello there, I'm Kvir Lutzato. In the next few minutes, I will tell you a few important things arising from my experience as a patent attorney working with many AI companies. Patenting AI is a complex subject that cannot be exhausted in a few minutes, but I have prepared a few highlights that I think you will find uh, useful and interesting. For an invention to be patentable, it must meet a number of criteria. I'm showing here four of those. Novelty, which means that the invention was never disclosed prior to filing the patent application. Inventive step, which means that the invention is not obvious to a person who is skilled in the field and has the ability to carry it out. It has to be sufficiently described in a way that everybody with the sufficient skills can carry it out, and we will be talking about this some more. And the invention has to be owned by the applicant for the patent, which is often the outcome of an assignment made by the inventor to his employee or any other person who owns invention. AI is most often associated with the, the use of neural networks and deep learning, and this creates a problem as far as patenting is concerned. In the words of an expert, we can build these models, but we don't know how they work. We'll see in a moment why this creates an issue when we try to patent inventions that employ deep learning. The reason why I included ownership among the criteria for a valid patent to be issued is connected with an interesting event which is uh, ongoing. In uh, 2019, a man by the name of Stephen Thaler, I believe, filed a patent application claiming that the inventor was AI uh, named Dabus. And uh, he sought to obtain a valid patent to uh, Dabus. Patent offices around the world thought that the idea was ridiculous and in any way was not uh, allowable by law and rejected the application. So, um, the, the case went to uh, appeal. Uh, recently, uh, as recently as, as this month, the UK High Court ruled that a, an AI cannot be an inventor, only a human person can be an inventor. There are many reasons for that beyond the uh, mere legal arguments, but we don't have the time to go into that now. Strangely enough, the Australian Federal Court ruled the opposite and ruled that Davos can be the inventor in the Australian patent application and will be interesting to see where that goes. The reason for filing this uh, patent application claiming an AI to be an inventor may be rooted in the issue of uh, sufficiency of description which we will discuss a little further on, which is particularly problematic, as I said, when uh, AI is involved, particularly processes like deep learning, for which we have no idea what uh, really takes place behind the scenes. So let's take a look at the obstacles we have to overcome when we want to try to patent an invention that relies on AI or is based essentially on AI. Novelty is not a problem, it's not an obstacle because you either have novelty or you don't. If you don't, there's nothing more that we have to say. Inventive step is a different story because in many cases the uh, developer relies on libraries of uh, known techniques and, and software and uh, puts them together to get a specific result and very often patent examiners will look at it and say well this is just good engineering you didn't invent anything you just took pieces of a puzzle and put them together and there is nothing inventive in it uh, this is often a very superficial way of looking at inventions uh, for comparison you can look at uh, uh, pharmaceutical drugs uh, where you uh, put together, you take atoms, you take molecules, everything is known in the art, 
but you put them together and you get a different result. And this is, nobody has a doubt that those are patentable. And there's no way and no reason why this should be different for AI. But then we have the significant problem of technical effect, which I will discuss in more details in uh, the next slide. But um, generally speaking, an invention cannot be just the uh, performance of a thought process. So if you take software that has to crunch numbers and uh, come up with an answer, um, unless you have a technical effect, uh, which you don't know yet what it is, but we'll know in a moment, then um, courts and, and patent examiners will tell you that this is not patentable. And then we have the big, big problem, which is efficiency of description. Uh, and we will uh, go into that in, in much greater detail. When we'll see what we have to do when confronted with the need to patent a, uh, an invention that relies on AI, we will see that sufficiency of description and the technical effect are related, and at least uh, in our need to overcome basic issues. But to understand that, first of all, we need uh, a little background. Uh, computer programs, which in, in the past, maybe 20 years ago, were uh, much more easy to patent, uh, are not that easier anymore. Supreme Courts and legislators have made efforts uh, over the years to make it really tough for us to patent software in general. For instance, the uh, European Patent Convention, which is uh, the convention according to which European patent applications are examined, uh, specifically says computer programs are not patentable. But there is an exclusion uh, if your computer program has a technical character. Now, uh, there is mountains of, of uh, discussions and ruling as to what does has, what doesn't have a technical character. But uh, to simplify, a computer program must have a further technical effect, which is an effect that goes beyond the mere effect of what the software does when it runs on the computer. In this context, we need to remember that uh, AI falls within the category of uh, software inventions. So we have to overcome the general problems that software has and then uh, deal with the specific issues that we have with AI. It is much easier to explain that our software has a further technical effect in the language of the EPC, which by the way is uh, slightly different elsewhere, but the essence is the same. Uh, if we can link our software to a physical element of the system, for instance, if our software, if the outcome of what our software does is uh, um, a physical mechanical element which is um, produced with a um, better quality, better precision, whatever you name it, uh, then we can link the, uh, our software, what it does and the way it operates to a physical effect, which definitely has a further technical effect beyond the fact that the software is running in the computer. It is operating a machine that uh, creates a physical item in a way that was uh, not as good in the past, but not as precise, uh, less efficient, whatever. Doing this properly requires taking the effort of uh, describing the system in detail, uh, providing examples of how the software operates in cooperation with the physical entities, and which is something that often, in my experience, um, is uh, getting it from the software engineer is like pulling teeth because he has this uh, high-level uh, flowchart, uh, which is very clear to him, 
but uh, he has to understand that it is not at all clear to the patent examiner or if the case goes on to a court, maybe to a judge, um, simply by looking at this kind of chart that we have a further technical effect. Uh, so the effort required in this case is uh, greater than we would like to uh, make, but it is necessary. So now the question of uh, sufficiency of description becomes much more complex. When we use uh, deep learning, for instance, um, we can tell what we did, how we constructed it, but we don't know and we cannot describe what goes on behind the scenes, what, what this is doing, what, how things happen behind the curtains. And um, so, um, in many cases, we may be told, well, look, you didn't describe uh, this uh, um, invention properly because uh, if someone else goes and uh, constructs uh, a system more or less like you described, but it may get a different result. It may not get the result that you're saying that you're getting. Uh, so your invention does not provide sufficient description to allow everybody or anybody to perform the invention. Um, so um, the question is how we overcome this particular problem. Of course, I'm generalizing, which is one of the worst things one can do in patents. Uh, but uh, in order to explain in uh, simple terms and in limited time, uh, we need to do that. The key in many cases uh, will be a basic fact of patent law, which is uh, for our invention to be patentable, we don't need to know why it works. We only need to be able to explain how to make it work, what, what's happening behind the scenes, is uh, doesn't really matter as long as we repeat the invention and we constantly obtain the result that uh, we uh, claim the invention to be obtaining. So um, the key to overcoming this problem when it when we are confronted with it is to enrich our description with as many alternatives as we can. An easy way to invalidate a patent is uh, for someone seeking to invalidate it to run the uh, experiment or the system described in the patent and show that um, he, it didn't work the way that we claimed it worked. And this sometimes is easy to do by um, changing some parameters or doing something slightly different and uh, therefore the, uh, our invention becomes vulnerable. But if we provide different alternatives and we describe more than one, uh, we make that difficult for the people to argue that uh, our invention is not properly described. That is often challenging for a patent attorney to obtain because the developer is busy, um, is focused on a very specific uh, solution to a very specific problem and it doesn't really want to spend the time uh, to explore other things which are really of no particular interest or practical interest at the moment. However, including uh, those alternatives that make the art description richer may greatly improve our chances of obtaining a patent and also of having a stronger patent, which is much more difficult to attack. So summarizing what all that means, it means that uh, if you have an important invention that is based on AI, you need to think a little outside the box and uh, avoid filing patent applications that are formally look beautiful, they have very nice diagrams, but they don't uh, take into account what will happen when the application hits the desk of a patent uh, examiner. And uh, you need to spell out the technical character. You need to make sure that your description is sufficient 
and uh, that takes a little effort, but is definitely worth doing. Thank you.